Good morning. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Law Across the Sea program here at ThinkTech. Uh, today we have a interesting program uh, where we talk about domestic law and international law and how they how they interact. Uh, the title of the show is Leaving on a Jet Plane. Uh, and, it, and it deals with the global globalization of law and how it affects family law, which most of us think of as something that is very private and very uh, restricted to where we live. But now that people are traveling all over the world, it, it changes. It, it, law changes just like humans do. And also some things remain the same. And I'm going to talk to my guest, Blake Okimoto, Good morning, Blake. Good morning, Mark. Good to Thank see you. you. Thank you very much for having me here. My pleasure. And you just came from court where you were uh, serving as a per diem judge. Yes, I right? was presiding in the criminal traffic arraignments calendar. Okay, but most of the time you're a family law lawyer, isn't I, that right? I, I have been. Uh, for about four decades. For 40 years. <laughs> And I know that because you and I went to school together, law school together. Yes. And we uh, even studied together uh, for the bar exam. And uh, after uh, passing the bar, you, you went one way, I went another. I, I mostly do uh, uh, business law, but you ended up in family law. How did that, how did that happen? What, what, what's your background and well, how did you get involved in family law? I, I think I just had an affinity of meeting people and discussing their problems. And it just so happened that my career gravitated towards a, a, a family uh, concentration. And I am uh, actively practicing, even though it's been four decades. <laughs> and and you, you grew up here in Hawaii? I, I grew up here in Hawaii. Um, went to school in Los Angeles at Claremont McKenna. For college? for college and we went uh, Mark and I attended the uh, University of uh, Puget Sound no, now known as Seattle University law school right, law right. school okay now um, just give us a little background of, about what you know be, before we get into the international aspects what, what is family law family law is anything and everything that you can imagine that concerns the family unit. The obvious one is divorce, uh, child custody, child support, visitation, property division, uh, allocation of debt. The less obvious ones are paternity or the determination of parenthood and the meeting out of financial obligations that, that come with it. Uh, custody as well yep. but there are adoptions there are guardianships there are orders of protection and therefore safety of members of the family or people in a quasi family situation there are juvenile cases the family court has jurisdiction over juveniles and there are cases involving abuse and neglect of children. Wow. So it's, it's much broader than, than I, of course, I've, I've never practiced too much, although you and I have done, done some cases to, yes. together where yes. you would come in as, as my expert. Yes. Uh, and and in, in the family law, there, there's a special court here in the United States, uh, at least here in Hawaii. I, I, is, it, is it the same throughout the United States? Do we have a special court for family law? Uh, in Hawaii, yes, we do. And it has uh, the same jurisdiction as f uh, civil courts. However, it is focusing on family issues. And here in Honolulu, we have our court uh, out in the Kapolei area. The family, family, family law court. court. And, yeah. and, and why did they feel that there's a special need for a family law court? Why, why, why can't it just be handled in the regular uh, courts, the civil courts? Well, it's a specialty and it deals with confidential matters. A lot of uh, the 
information that is passed through these courts are of very personal mm. matters. And therefore, family uh, courts, uh, by and large, are, are confidential courts. Now, it is not true throughout the United States. And it depends on a state-by-state -state basis. Some courts uh, have a separate family court, and some courts have courts that deal with everything. And it just depends on the state. Okay. And so here in Hawaii, and that's what we're going to talk about uh, here in Hawaii, uh, there is a special family law court. And you mentioned that you uh, got into it and you sort of had an affinity for helping people. Well, you know, uh, that area of law is not a, I mean, it doesn't sound like a happy area of law. But, but how, how, do you, how do you help folks in, in that area? Well, Mark. On the outset, when you think of issues such as their high-stress issues, divorce is one of the highest-stress <laughs> issues that an individual can, can experience in life. And that being said, it, it, it may be very difficult for people to even come to an attorney's office to discuss their personal matters relating to their, their family. And uh, the, the concept is, is that it is a difficult area, it is not a happy area, but to the contrary. Because what you achieve for these people is you obtain for them a significant change in their lives. Their lives, on an individual basis, they may have been stuck in a rut for a long period of time, knowing not what to do and being prodded by friends and relatives as to what they should do and being concerned about the difficulties in making decisions. So I congratulate a client for coming to my office and meeting me because that is no easy thing to and do. So that's a tough step. That's a, that's tough, a tough step. step. Okay. And at the end, it, it is really kind of a, uh, an achievement to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. They get out of a bad situation and can go on with life is what I hear you saying. Yes. Okay, now I want to transition uh, from that background uh, to more of an international uh, flavor, although I, I understand most cases involve Hawaii, Hawaii citizens, but a lot of my clients are international clients. In other words, they come from various countries all over the world. Uh, they may come to Hawaii to do some business, usually of some sort, uh, and they come with their families. Uh, they may leave their country of origin, whatever it is, but they, they may bring some of these family stresses along with them uh, and have, you know what 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 do you know about uh, generally speaking the foreign countries and do they have family courts like we have here in the United States or Hawaii some do and some do not and it, it just kind of depends uh, here in Hawaii we see a lot of people we are experiencing the, if I may say, the globalization of our world. And as a result, yes, we are seeing families from the Orient. Sometimes we see families from Europe or Canada. And I have uh, participated in divorce actions or divorce issues, not only in the Orient, in Canada, and also in Europe. Okay, so so the the same type of uh, it, uh, problems or or I internal uh, matters arise everywhere. The same problems, but in different understandings, different cultures. So so what, tell me a little bit about that. What what have you noticed with dealing with uh, um, people that come to you for help? Yes. And family law from, from different, different countries, different cultures. Well, I think that the most obvious one, uh, and I could give the example 
of Japan and Korea, because I've had experience in dealing with uh, Japanese and, and as well as Korean clients, they have a concept that is contrary to our concept of divorce. Now, here in the United States, we have no-fault divorce. In other words, if one party wants to obtain a divorce, they may do so by going and filing an action in our family courts. And it does not matter if there is an agreement. However, in Asian countries, there is, as a general rule, although there are some exceptions, the requirement that there be an agreement. An agreement as to? As to the what? divorce itself. So they have to reach an agreement that they're about going to their divorce. disagreement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that, that would be a nice way to put it. And, and, and that is because the, the fundamental cultures are so different. For instance, in Japan, in Korea, they have a family register system. Mm. In other words, families, when they get married, they start their own register of people. And in Japan, this is very odd, to divorce can be very, very easy because all that is necessary is to delete a name from the family register. But to do so, they both have to agree. I see. However, there is, as I understand it, procedures where there is no agreement. And they actually are litigated in the family court. But before they're litigated, Japan and, and probably Korea requires uh, a lot of mediation. In other words, they're urged to come to an agreement. And is this through the court or through their well, counsel or both? Or? Both. I see. Yes. And so uh, in, w with respect to um, those uh, foreigners who, who are now from outside the United States and I'm not trying to raise an election uh, issue, but uh, a lot of foreigners are coming into the United States do, doing business here. Uh, and w what, what have you noticed? You mentioned the globalization of family law. What, what does that mean? The globalization may mean, for instance, if families come here, some member of the family may remain in their home country or children may go to school here and their parents may be in uh, the, the foreign country and travel back and forth, which raises some kind of immigration issue. But uh, the globalization meaning uh, even more so because we have individuals, high net worth individuals who go to many, many jurisdictions. They go to the United States. They have homes in Europe. They have homes in all over the United States. Have you, have you noticed, uh, with respect to the practice of law, any lawyers uh, focusing on this type of area? Uh, I, when, I, when I started uh, practicing law 40 years ago, uh, there really wasn't that much of, of that type of thing happening, uh, but seems like it might be a niche for, for lawyers uh, to get involved with international practice or international divorce or, or international custody. Is that, oh. have, you, have, have you noticed that happening? Or? Yes. Um, I, I know that if you look on the internet, there are uh, law firms that do specialize as, uh, in, in international family court matters. Now, international family court matters entail, for instance, kidnapping and abduction, mm. the division of property, uh, the assessment of child support, alimony, and the payment of obligations. Aside from the fundamental problem of, of getting divorce, Okay, now I want to take a little break right now, okay. and then when we come back, I want to talk about some uh, real life examples that have crossed your desk uh, without going into details of the uh, confidentiality matters, but j just talk a little bit about that. Certainly. All right, All right. Certainly. thank you. So we'll take a little break right now. Aloha 
and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm the weekly host at 11 a.m. Honolulu time. Very excited for the next six weeks. We have the Aspire series, which is all about the coolest careers I could find and interviewing and getting insights from these amazing people who want to share it with you and help you live your dreams. Look forward to seeing you on the show. Aloha. Please join us at Think Tech Hawaii. My program is Asia in Review. And my next program is on November 17, Thursday, 11 a.m. This is Johnson Choi, your host. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with The Economy and You, and I'd like to invite you each week to come watch my show each Wednesday at 3 p.m. We're back, and we are talking about uh, international law inter and globalization of family law uh, on law across the sea. And my guest is uh, Blake Okimoto, uh, uh, your honor, because he's a per diem judge. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I want to kind of talk, uh, you've, had, you've been practicing family law for 40 years, uh, and the way you look at it is you're helping people. Uh, and uh, I, I, I like that idea that attorneys can help people. And now we find that there's more foreigners coming in from outside the United States, outside of Hawaii, uh, and they find themselves in the grips of family problems, family law problems, uh, divorce and, and custody of, of children. Uh, we, you know, we've seen a lot of folks from, uh, uh, from Japan come in, uh, and I think it, it, that's become a uh, area of practice where there's been a Japanese marriage, and but they come to Hawaii and they get divorced. Uh, and now, you know, we may see some more from uh, China coming in. Uh, uh, what, what has been some of your experiences? Maybe uh, start with Japan and, and, and move on from very, their, their various countries and the backgrounds and what, what's happened uh, from an, an, an anecdotal uh, yeah, well, standpoint. Yeah, well, you and I, um, perhaps maybe 10, 15 years ago, had the uh, privilege of uh, representing the same client uh, whose wife resided in Hawaii, the husband resided in Japan, and uh, they, they had some connection with uh, Greece. Um, kind of an interesting uh, situation. And we were concerned about jurisdiction and forum shopping because uh, what are the issues that would be considered in any person that is considering embarking upon uh, the changing of their life in this way is which courts are gonna give them the best deal. Mm -hmm. And we needed to be uh, have all our bases covered, so you had me cover the base in, in case because the the mother or the wife, it was a custody matter as well, had resided and had family in Hawaii. And also the, the husband uh, had his business and, and lived in Japan. Ultimately what happened was the divorce occurred in Athens, Greece. And I and think we, we had to have uh sort of an international uh, team of yes. lawyers uh, in Japan, Hawaii, and Greece. And Greece. Uh, to, to work it out. And I, I think it, it eventually worked out. Yes. Uh, but it just shows you the, the, the breadth. Yes. One of my comments about international family law is, is that it is necessary to find somebody with experience in this area somebody who has done it before and it is also necessary to retain counsel in other jurisdictions who have also had this type of experience for instance in the case that we uh, uh, did we had uh, I think it was Hashimoto sensei in, in Osaka that we worked with and uh, we, we also had uh, communications with the uh, Greek attorney. Right. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, people pass through Hawaii, and 
particularly high net worth people um, may not even be in Hawaii for more than two months, but oftentimes they consider Hawaii as a uh, jurisdiction for which they would consider divorce because they got married in Hawaii. So can, can they do that? Is that, is that something that's allowed uh, under the law? Can they, just because we've been here for a short time, can we uh, choose Hawaii uh, as a place to get divorced or do they have to go back to their home country? And, and by the way, what does Hawaii think about where they got married? Is, are there any problems with uh, uh, being married in Japan with respect to being divorced in Hawaii? Well, Hawaii recognizes a marriage anywhere it is valid, it is a legal marriage. One of the things that you need to prove is, is that there was a valid marriage. Now, To get divorced, you to have get to prove divorced, you were married. You yeah. were married. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because, and that's not always true. And uh, sometimes uh, there is a semblance of marriage, although they've never married, or one party has failed to obtain a divorce from another party. I see. And therefore, it's not really a, a divorce. It becomes an annulment. And there's a huge difference because although there would be children and child support, there is no division of property. Um, okay, so let, let, me, let me ask you about this. Uh, you have a client that is married in, in a foreign country, say Japan or Vietnam or China. Uh, they come to Hawaii, uh, they have children, uh, they have property, you know, wealthy folks, uh, and they have property in their home country. The children may be here going to school. How, how does that all sort out? Uh, with respect to, first of all, uh, property, because when you get divorced, there's a property settlement or there's some division of property normally here in Hawaii. And then with respect to children, how, how are the children treated and what, what are some of the problems that arise and how are, what are some of the solutions? Oh, that is a great question, <laughs> Mark. And let me just break it up in, in some subparts. First of all, a Hawaii court needs to have jurisdiction. And that is, the uh, party, one party who's, who's filing needs to have resided in the state of Hawaii for more than six months prior to the filing of the complaint for divorce and for more than three months in the city and county or the county of which the divorce action is filed. If those requirements are met, then they can get a divorce in a uh, uh, well, one party can g obtain a divorce. Now, there Here are in yes, there are stages of divorce. It could be if the other spouse has never been to Hawaii, then we have problems in dividing property. You can get a divorce, and you call it an ex parte divorce. The divorce itself can be granted. However, the court may reserve or probably will reserve all other issues to a court of competent jurisdiction because the other side has no uh, connection to the state of Hawaii. It, it's sort of like an uh, 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 international shoe. Uh, yes, type of situation. Where you have to have jurisdiction. You have to have. And so you may have to go back to the home country to you, deal, you, you to deal with You may have to go uh, to a, a, another. And, and oftentimes we're dealing with uh, real property in other jurisdictions. The question is, Hawaii courts can deal with the division of property if both parties have submitted to the personal jurisdiction of the uh, of the state of Hawaii. However, in some occasions where title is in dispute, not that there, there, there is no dispute that they own this property, but title is in dispute, then my experience has been is, is that the Hawaii courts will defer jurisdiction to a court in which the property is, is present in. So, so really, 
we, we have some jurisdiction here in Hawaii, and we uh, uh, may have to do more with respect to uh, other issues in the home country. That may come up. Uh, and so it, it's kind of a piecemeal process yes. is what I, what I see. And uh, there is a uh, potential that you can get divorced here in Hawaii, uh, maybe even deal with some of the other issues, uh, such as uh, 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 property and if, they, if everybody agrees. If not, you may have to go back to the home country. Same thing with uh, children. Uh, children uh, may uh, be an issue that comes up. and. Uh, it, de it may depend where, where the children are, is that right? It, it, it may depend where the children are and whether or not another court has taken jurisdiction over that issue. We have the Uniform Child Custody Jurisdiction Act here, and it, it, it requires that the child, as a general rule, be re uh, a resident of the state for at least six months, and uh, uh, unless there are absent extraordinary issues such as abuse. And I was uh, involved as a consultant in a case involving um, a client in Maui in which this was at issue. However, uh, a court in Germany had uh, uh, rendered a decision as to custody. So the issue was whether or not the German courts had followed the same rules and procedures or similar rules and procedures as the Hawaii court. And, and we're going to have to end pretty soon on that. But before we do, this is not the first time that we've sat down together and talked and prepared. There's a oh photo there goodness. of us studying for the bar exam uh, over 40 years ago. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, thank you, Mark. We've changed a little bit. A little. <laughs> <laughs> not much. But I just wanted to share that. Uh, we've talked story for at least 40 years. Oh, yes. And so it's good to have you back here talking story again. Thank you very much, Blake. Well, thank you for having me. All right. Mark.